Clients order billiard tables much like they would custom-designed furniture. They pick the table's style, colors, the type of wood, and its lacquer and stain. The table comes in maple, walnut, mahogany, cherry, and the most popular, oak. A computer-guided machine shapes part of what'll be the table's frame. This machine's rotating heads perform several different tasks. A profiling head carves the angle of part of the frame. A routering head creates the table's decorative grooves. And a drilling head makes holes for bolts to fit through. Six wood components, called rails, will surround the playing surface. They have diamond-shaped carvings that'll become visual markers for the players. After spraying the rails with glue, a worker inserts 18 metal nuts. They'll be used later to secure the rails to the playing surface. He attaches rubber strips along the sticky rails, which are just over one meter long. The rubber will cushion the balls when they hit the sides. The rails then pass through a press twice to ensure the rubber adheres. Next, workers move the rails along this nine meter long sanding machine. Rubber wheels gently grip each rail as presses rub sandpaper along the edge and top. They skip the bottom because it'll be covered. They pass the rails through this sander several times to smooth them down. To make sure everything fits, a worker pre-assembles the four sides and the middle section of the frame's base. He uses 20 metal bolts and 20 nuts to join them. And he inserts eight wooden dowels in order to align the table parts correctly. He stamps numbers on the frame sections so they can be reassembled later by pairing the same numbered parts together. Next, a worker hot glues 18 2.5 cm long mother of pearl components called sights. He fits them into the carvings on the rails, which have now been stained to the desired shade. He taps them into place using a hammer and a block made of synthetic resin. This way, he won't damage the rail. A worker then lines the rubber part of the rail with cloth made of wool and nylon. He attaches it with a plastic strip that fits over the cloth and into a groove. He uses a mallet to ensure the cloth is tightly inserted. The worker then staples the cloth to the other side of the rail. A zinc and brass plaque displays the table's brand name. After shipping, workers reassemble the table in its new home. Serial numbers ensure the parts belong to the same table. Assembly takes about two hours. They match the numbered parts together using up to 50 bolts and 50 nuts. Then they level the table using metal components called leg levelers to adjust the table's height. It's like sticking a matchbook under an uneven table leg. Now comes the really heavy lifting. Workers fit the three sections of the table's top, which are made of slate and weigh up to 136 kilograms each. Slate won't degrade and it won't budge if you hit it. The workers use 12 screws to attach the slate sections to the frame. They level the sections using wedge-shaped plastic shims between the slate and the frame. Next, a worker melts wax over the cracks between the sections. He uses a scraper to smooth out the playing surface. The remaining holes will later be covered by rails. After the wax dries, they cover the table surface with cloth, which comes in a variety of colors. They cut the cloth in the corners so there won't be any creases in the lining of the pocket holes. They staple the cloth to wood strips under the slate. A worker pierces the cloth over the holes in the slate so he can later attach the rails. The six pockets are 15 centimeters deep and consist of a metal frame covered with a leather lattice. Workers install 18 threaded metal rods underneath the rails. Then they flip the rail assembly and insert the rods through pre-made holes in the tabletop. They use nuts to secure the rods in place. Screws attach the pockets and voila, your table is ready. For prices ranging between $1,500 and $15,000, you have quite a stylish game. Just watch out for the sharks.